The Philadelphia and Reading Railroad was created to carry anthracite coal from the Pottsville area to Philadelphia in 1833. In the early 1800s, coal was replacing wood and charcoal as the fuel of the American Industrial Revolution. As one of the pioneer railroads of America, the Philadelphia and Reading introduced several innovations, such as the familiar cross buck, which alerts roadway travelers to the danger of crossing a railroad. The Philadelphia and Reading built its steam locomotives at 7th and Chestnut Streets in Reading. Interestingly, these buildings still stand today. By 1903, the railroad completed a much larger shop complex at 6th and Spring Streets in Reading. The new shops also produced freight cars and eventually employed 5,000 people. As the railroad grew, it evolved into the largest corporation in the United States during the 1870s. The corporate structure still is the model used by corporations today. In addition, it purchased or leased smaller railroads in southeastern Pennsylvania, giving it access to Allentown, Bethlehem, Lancaster, Harrisburg, Shippensburg, and Williamsport. The railroad expanded to the New Jersey shore points via the Atlantic City Railroad. In 1938, the Reading introduced the first stainless steel streamlined train in the eastern United States, which it named the Crusader, operating between Philadelphia and New York City. The Reading Railroad continued to exist until bankruptcy forced its inclusion into the government-backed Conrail system on April 1, 1976. The railroad was the victim of factors beyond its control. First was the change in the way people heated their homes and businesses. After World War II, oil and natural gas became the preferred fuel. In addition, much of America's industrial base moved to the south and to the west, leaving fewer customers for the railroad. Finally, the completion of the interstate highway system and the St. Lawrence Seaway diverted traffic away from railroads. In addition to giving trucks a taxpayer-supported right-of-way, the new highways enabled families to reach vacation destinations easily by automobile. Living in today's world, it's difficult to realize the impact of the Reading Railroad. Building the railroad in the 19th century required hundreds of workers. Many of these were immigrants from Wales, Italy, Ireland, and Poland. What had been a region dominated by English and Pennsylvania Dutch became more ethnically diverse. Today we receive our news instantly via the internet, television, or radio. Prior to the 1930s, news came from newspapers delivered by railroads or from local railroad depots. Depots were usually the center of each town socially and geographically. In 1950 and 1957, the Reading carried thousands of Boy Scouts to the National Jamborees held at Valley Forge Park. Commuter service led to the growth of many suburban towns like Lansdale, Jenkintown, Hatboro, Norristown, and Doylestown. Until 1962, mail and parcel posts were delivered via railroads and services provided by the Reading. Many of the industries depended upon the railroad. Steel and iron ore companies at Coatesville, Conchahocken, Birdsboro, Pottstown, Phoenixville, Reading, and Harrisburg all used the Reading for shipments of finished products and supplies of coal, iron ore, and limestone. Farmers depended upon the Reading for shipment of their goods and delivery of farm machinery. Milk and cream were sent daily to Philadelphia on Reading trains. The Reading Railroad fostered a community of employees by sponsoring rifle, baseball, bowling teams, a choral society, a marching band complete with uniforms. The company was like a family. While the Reading Railroad is gone, 
there is still evidence of its presence. The shop buildings in Reading remain occupied by small businesses. Older Reading residents have memories of the outer station and its swinging bridge. Many station buildings still exist, some being used by SEPTA for commuting to Philadelphia. Others are occupied by gift shops, restaurants, flower shops, banks, and ice cream parlors. The former Reading Terminal is part of the Pennsylvania Convention Center in downtown Philadelphia. The large train shed of the former terminal is used as a ballroom. Towns bear the names of former railroad officials like Lansdale, Telford, and Cressona, while regions like the North Penn area around Lansdale and the East Penn area west of Allentown can trace their origins to the railroad. Many towns have a railroad street and have a grid that reflects the location of a railroad. Beautiful bridges like the structure at East Falls in Philadelphia and the Susquehanna River Bridge at Harrisburg serve as reminders of what once was. As one of the four railroads on the game of Monopoly, players can still take a ride on the Reading. Perhaps the most lasting effect of the Reading Railroad is the fact that two of our largest railroads in the United States, CSX and Norfolk Southern, as well as dozens of smaller railroad companies in Pennsylvania, still serve customers by rail on tracks built by the Reading Railroad.